All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayed from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So this is our chit chat, our favorite time. I hope you had a great weekend. I could not go to San Francisco on Saturday. I actually went there on Sunday. On Saturday, I did a lot of chores. Plus, uh, my wife was not well because of the injury to her eye. And then um, on Sunday, uh, I took her to San Francisco. And that was my weekend. Lots of painting and stuff. So somebody was saying that there were two doctors on Seth Rogen who gave a shout out to Dr. Bean. I believe one of them is Dr. Corey. Um, Rima says, hope oh, Mrs. Bean is OK. Yeah, she is. So she uh, injured her eye on Friday. Something um, kind of hit her eye. And then I asked her to go to emergency, but she didn't want to. And fortunately, then I went and I got some over the counter things, and that started helping her. And so but she's much better <laughs> today actually we went to <laughs> to the doctor and it turned out that appointment was for tomorrow so we went there we waited there and then when the time came they told her that hey your appointment is actually tomorrow <laughs> so that is what happened so Audrasi says ivermectin being present very good Hello to everyone, Doug. Hello. I saw Jenna here as well, so good to know that Jenna is here. Simple Garden, hello. Christy, hello. Closet Picker, hello. So here are some questions. So let's start with the questions. Be Curious says, given that there had been a chance change in ivermectin dose up to 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 milligram per kilogram, and given that Delta variant has higher viral load or requires lower vi viral inoculum, should the ivermectin prophylaxis dosing change? I think 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 is sufficient. And if uh, in Mexico, people have tried from 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 as well. So I think in the area of uh, outbreak, it can. But this is this is a good enough dose. Rima says, Alhamdulillah, yes, thank you very much. Um, Jim Matic says, Frozen. Jim, how are you doing? And <laughs> I hope you can now watch it. George Smooth is here with the with the uh, ivermectin man. Greetings from the third wave Delta variant South Africa. Hello, how are you doing? Teresa says, paying for your wife's recovery speedily. Thank you very much, Italian Bean. Um, Regeneron works very well, very good if given before day 10. I totally agree with this. Look, uh, I was thinking about this this morning. I think the... COVID has just been on my head all the time. Today I was thinking, I was driving when I was taking my wife to hospital, and I was thinking that Trump and Giuliani were very quickly um, recovered. And if you see, they said that Trump's uh, oxygen saturation had dropped to 80%, which is many people would have put, many doctors would have put the patient on ventilator at that time. And I believe one important factor was Regeneron. <laughs> Texas Max says, yeah, Regen, Regen, rejuvenate the beans, San Fran and painting, no eye injury. So she's OK now. She had the eye injury on Friday. So then um, I attended her uh, over Saturday. Then Sunday, she felt better. We went out uh, to San Francisco. Today, I, I wanted her to go to a doctor so today's story is different. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. Doug, hello. How are you? OK, so now let's see more questions. There are more questions. <laughs> that, that's correct. So Doug says he may have gotten ivermectin. I believe ivermectin plus hydroxy. Hey, Mr. Dog Griff, how are you? And Gazer, Gazer says, Fast food eaters, are there any dietary studies? Hmm, that's a good one. No, not that I know of. Ken says, are there any comorbidities that preclude using ivermectin as a prophylaxis? What about heart valve replacement or heart bypass surgery? Both of them themselves are not the uh, exclusions, but patient may be on blood thinners. That means dose may be needed to be adjusted. Similarly, liver as a comorbidity, liver issues can cause someone to reduce the dose. 
Similarly, people who may be um, using alcohol more than normal, they would need uh, ivermectin dose to be adjusted. Renal failure or renal issues usually do not need ivermectin dose adjustment because the excretion of ivermectin is primarily with by the liver and through the fecal route. Francis says, new bean here. Welcome, new bean. Thank you for all you do, Dr. Mubin. Thank you very much. Welcome here. Um, our patron forever says, Trump and Julian, Giuliani got VIP treatment. Yes. And um, I still remember I was on Lawrence Road going towards the uh, clinic with my wife, and I was thinking about Trump and Giuliani. And I was thinking if they had made that protocol a standard protocol for everyone. Remember, Trump even said that, hey, whatever I got or something to that effect should be available to everyone. If they had made that as a standard protocol, we would have saved so many lives. You know that I try to avoid saying we would have saved so many lives because it looks a little um, disturbing for those who have lost folks. The, our, the US is just... So Lewis said, what is new update dose for ivermectin if infected? So I still offer from 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 milligram per kilogram body weight. Uh, FLCCC 0 0.2 to 0 0.4 milligram per kilogram body weight. Uh, for anosmia, I give 0 0.3 milligram per kilogram body weight. Within two to three days, it helps. So these are the doses that I use. Texas Max says 26 out of 97, get point beans, yes. And if Jenna is back, hopefully France will be back soon as well. So can are there any? So I responded to that one. Michelle, hello, Michelle, how are you? Question, what to do if a second dose of Novavax didn't work for a 91-year-old female? No positive IgG times three test. How about T-detect test, number one? Number two. Um, Try uh, messenger RNA-based vaccines. Fresh says, this is the first I've heard of the ivermectin dose going up 2.6 milligram per kilogram. Is this something new? No, actually, this has been something that was used in Mexico. So I do not do this. I, I stay within 0 0.2 to 0 0.4. I actually, depending upon the person's health status, 0.15 to 0 0.2, or at most 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, I don't go to 0 0.6. I do, actually don't go above 0 0.4. Ambal, you are correct. You are correct. <clears throat> Jack says, Trump got that useless remedy. I mean, they threw everything at him. Uh, we should have gotten that for everyone, these things. Without, can you imagine this? That Regenron is approved, but you have to ask for it. How many people know that they need to ask for it? Arun says European Union has excluded COVID 19 vaccine, COVID Shield, from its Green Pass list. I suppose UK is using AstraZeneca and India is also using AstraZeneca. Do you think both vaccines are different? No, they should be the same. I mean, even for UK, I believe that production is in India and that is AstraZeneca. So why did they... Isn't Shield AstraZeneca? So Rene says, could people who have long haulers be more susceptible to second COVID infection? No. No, so it's not about the intensity, it's the dysregulation. So no. <laughs> Doug says, well, you can always expect these, these questions from Doug. So Doug says, what's wrong with alcohol? What's normal alcohol? Nothing wrong with alcohol. Uh, what I mean is, so again, barring the religious connotations, what I mean is that sometimes when alcohol is taken in more than what liver can handle, alcohol is uh, broken down 
by the liver. So when the liver becomes busy breaking down alcohol, at that time it cannot do other things. So if one has taken ivermectin and the liver is busy with alcohol, then the ivermectin dose will become greater than needed. Number one. Number two, someone who is a chronic alcoholic, who and what does that mean by definition, medical definition, a situation where the liver damage has occurred because of the chronic use of alcohol. In that case as well, because liver is not functioning correctly, it will not break down ivermectin correctly and it will not eliminate it correctly. So a lower dose of ivermectin will be needed. Laurie says, you said J&J not as effective. Did I say J&J, Johnson & Johnson? Today I did not even talk about Johnson & Johnson. TV doctor said they should just stop using J&J as only 40 to 50% effective. What about people who got the J&J not protected as well? TV doctors say no data yet. Sounds fishy. I have no idea, uh, Laurie, what are you talking about? Uh, J&J has its own eff efficacy slightly lower because it is one dose. They don't give two doses. And I think they're trialing two doses. But I do not know exactly what you're talking about. Reindeer says, is there a plausible epigenetic molecular mechanism in biology whereby the vaccinated may affect the health status of the unvaccinated? Zero chance. Zero. And we can talk about the mechanisms. Uh, Melody says, can our doctors in US prescribe ivermectin? Uh, on a technical basis, yes, they can they can prescribe it as an off-label. However, the question is, do they? And majority do not. So then the question becomes, how do we get ivermectin? For that, please go to flccc.net. Let me just show it to you very quickly. Um, so go to flccc.net. It will go to COVID. It would redirect to COVID-19 critical. Over here, if you see um, ivermectin, how to get ivermectin here. And if you go there, you would see the doctors who prescribe ivermectin. So that is how you can get it. Claire Garner says, I'll have a lump the size of a golf ball on my right arm after having AstraZeneca in March. My mobility got worse to the point where we can't hardly do anything. My bones and joints are. So this seems like a local damage that occurred. Now, is that bleeding that happened or is that uh, excessive immune response? I would think such a large uh, swelling should be local bleeding or damage. So did you show it to the doctor? This is something that you should go to emergency for right away. So did you hear about Oxford University's ivermectin random double blind trial? Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, they're using 0.3 three days course. I have not, but it will be interesting. Did they show the data yet? Pasi, hello, how are you? <laughs> Can see on this on the doctor, his web page link is in video info as far as I know. EJM says, are people reasonably protected with ivermectin and no vaccine? Yes, so the protection is at least, so there is an Egyptian study that showed in healthcare workers, usage of ivermectin allowed 74% efficacy for prophylaxis. There are other studies that show higher. So I would take 74% as a lower case and say it has efficacy for prophylaxis. It does have efficacy during the active disease as well. So 
DIY Grandma Farmer says, is Pfizer vaccine, so Pfizer is messenger RNA, safe for those with sickle cell disease? So we know that vaccines have in some people caused vasculitis and that has even caused long haul symptoms. So if there is sickle cells, if I can very quickly go to my drawing board, So what happens in sickle cell is that as the, so let's say this is a blood vessel artery and it becomes, as it goes farther and farther and divides and divides, finally it becomes a capillary, correct? So it, meaning it continues to have smaller and smaller diameter. Now the RBCs that are running around, they become sickled because of the precipitation of the material inside that sickled RBC can start getting stuck in the capillaries because it cannot bend. That is called thimbing. Thimbing is a process in which if this is a blood vessel, RBC kind of squeezes through this like this and, and passes through this by squeezing. So this process of RBC kind of squeezing through the blood vessel. Blood vessel diameter is smaller. RBC's diameter is actually larger. And so RBC has to squeeze through it. This is called thimbing. So what happens is when RBC is not flexible that it can bend, it is more sickle-like, like this. Now this RBC with those spiky things sticking out or in, when it comes in, it would get stuck. And that is how the uh, occlusion occurs and that is how ischemia and damage and pain and all that occurs. Now, if the blood vessels are already swollen because of vasculitis caused by vaccines in some cases, then it is possible that the sickle cell patient would get a little attack of sickle cell. That is in theory. Now the question, will everyone with a sickle cell develop this? That's not known. So this is still an unknown that who gets this versus not. Nairi says, I love Dr. Bean, love back to you as well. Um, yes, this is very important. If somebody is trying to get the uh, ivermectin, have good Rx and that would get if they're going to say $250 for, let's say, one month or two months of supply with good, good Rx, it would come down to $25 or $30. Dan Marquis says, I read that S2 protein of the spike has a strong affinity to P53, S2, BRCA, and telomerases. Should the vaccinated be concerned by this? So I need to look at this study. Vaccinated are not going to produce vaccine or spike for a long time. Because of that, even if there is anything here, any side effect, that is short-lived. There are people who become long haulers with vaccine, unfortunately, and they have gotten no support at all. Now, who becomes long hauler is not known. But I can tell you those who become long haulers, it's a huge suffering. Srinivas says, Dr. Bean, can you guess roughly when we can expect this pandemic to is going to end? Two years or three years or five years or more. <laughs> so Srinivas, why in years? So for US, I think we are at the end of it. We should just expect another couple of months and we are done. Um, for other countries, it may continue for some more time. So the nuisance of this disease or the surfacing of the disease outbreaks here and there would continue for some time now, I think even one or more year. But in majority of the countries, it will get um, taken care of very fast. Steve Ono says, are some long haul patients recovering fully and permanently? I'm mostly hearing they're getting better and feeling better, but are they returning to their pre-COVID state? Yes. So I want a very good question. 
And I'll tell you this, that people relapse so often. What happens is the following, and this is happening to my patients as well. They take the medicine, they feel better. As soon as they feel better, they go and resume their activity and they relapse. The reason for that is I believe that when this happens, there is immense psychological trauma to say, why did I get a vaccine to end up in this state? Or vaccine or infection caused long haul. They say, I'm young. This is the most common thing I hear from the patients. I am young. I am athletic. I am healthy. I eat healthy. I, I have healthy lifestyle. I go to gym. I walk. I bicycle. And then why is this happening? So they wish it go away. So as soon as they feel a little better, they resume their normal activity to prove to them that they, are, they have recovered, and that causes a relapse. So my biggest challenge is usually to request the patients to not uh, get back into that state and just wait it out. I want to read something for you that I received without, without naming name names. I want to read this just one second please it's actually important in this context in this context sorry i'm just going to search for it one second Here, so without naming name, thank you. I'm a long hauler since March of 2020, March of 2020. It was before COVID testing was available. So my team of doctors have been treating me for everything imaginable unsuccessfully. A lung biopsy showed lymphocytic bronchiolitis last year. Then they assumed a, I had rheumatoid arthritis with interstitial lung disease. I've been on egregious amounts of prednisone since September, which is effective but shredded my body. Cal Calcept didn't work. Rituximab infusion didn't work. Then I saw your video about MCAS and I tried Benadryl and Zyrtec. It worked. I'm not a long hauler anymore. Keep spreading the word. So this is a person suffering since March 2020. And look at the invasive things they went through. And now this is June 27. They're writing that they are out of it. Uh, many of the long haulers, uh, patients that I work with, they have recovered. Uh, a smaller number have relapsed. A smaller, even a smaller number, do not even respond to the medication. So um, this is a mixed bag. So far, all the pathologies that have emerged, they show that this has to be a this has to be a tractable disease. This has to be a curable disease. So ideally, there is a solution. Texas Max says, "Can a long haul symptoms be sudden, bad knee, hip pain, lack of joint strength?" I haven't seen this most of the time long haul is sudden and most of the time what I have seen is the exercise intolerance or rigorous activity intolerance, brain fog, uh, confusion, visual disturbance, tinnitus and things like that. But yes, it is sudden. Uh, a young woman that I am managing at this time, 25 years of age, got asymptomatic COVID in September of last year, got her, some genius told her to go take a vaccine. She took vaccine in April, I believe, first dose near the end of April, second dose near the mid of or near the later part of May, and then two, three weeks later, 
two weeks later, maybe. She suddenly became long hauler, and now she developed brain fog and, and concentration and confusion to the point that this young woman who was doing her daily activities, lived in her own apartment, was an engineer. All of a sudden, she had to move back to her parents because she could not even go out for groceries. And so uh, I managed her. Two days ago, she said, doing very good, normal. And I'm out for boba tea, and I'm out for this. And I said, stop, stop, don't do it. And yesterday, she called, and she said, I'm back with my parents. I am feeling confused, not as, as badly, but I'm, I'm feeling confused again. So I requested her to take care of uh, the activities. So to, to your question, Texas Meg, yes, abrupt start is possible. It is possible that some folks would develop uh, joint pains, but um, I have seen other more, other symptoms more. And related to this from joint pain, my wife has recovered fully from Johnson & Johnson. This is after 90 days. Her um, All the issues that included joint pains, fatigue, myalgias, dizziness, more, they have all gone. So we are fortunate. And I started from the day of vaccination. I had started her on anti-clotting and on anti-inflammatory and on anti-allergies. And I just did not relent. She's <laughs> She did not listen to me for ivermectin. But I kept doing what I could while her doctor kept saying, I have no idea what's going on. Doug says, is ivermectin effective on Delta? Yes. Look, the effect of ivermectin, I have done this discussion before. I'll just very quickly explain it. Ivermectin's role. Ivermectin, there are many functions now. There is a latest paper from Dr. Pia Dagni, uh, which has tons of functions that they have discussed. I usually discuss five functions. So one function is that it helps reduce the the connectivity with ACE2. So ivermectin does that for the actual virus. The vaccine doesn't need to do this. Although if some folks are, are afraid that vaccine will produce a spike protein that would go and bind with the ACE2 unnecessarily, they can take ivermectin and that would help reduce this binding. So that's one. Second, ivermectin inside, when the virus arrives, Virus produces RDRP enzyme. Vaccine does not. So Iv ivermectin disrupts RDRP. Vaccine does not produce this enzyme, so ivermectin does not do anything to the vaccine. Similarly, virus produces what we say MPRO or 3-chymotrypsin-like protease or 3-CTLP enzyme, and that is produced by the virus. Ivermectin disrupts that as well. Vaccine does not produce that enzyme, so ivermectin doesn't do anything to the vaccine. Then virus uses important alpha and beta to talk with the, with the nucleus. Vaccines don't do that. And so there is no need to disrupt alpha, important alpha and beta, although ivermectin would disrupt them, but they would have no effect. Then ivermectin modulates nuclear factor K beta, which is important for vaccine or for virus to reduce inflammation. So all the functions of ivermectin are actually uh, not going to affect the vaccine and actually reduce the effect of vaccine, I think that it would prevent vaccine-related long hauler. So ivermectin, I believe, is a necessary thing to take with vaccine. So I hope that answers that question. Um, KD says, any advice to minimize chances of becoming a long haul vaccine, getting it later this week? So the same thing. Take So what I did for myself, I can't say it to you. The reason for that is, number one, I'm not your doctor. I cannot give medical advice here. Number three, when you talk with your uh, provider or the person who is going to inject the vaccine, they would say, are you taking any medicines? And you'll say, I'm taking this. And they'll say, you should not have. So this means it is really between you and your doctor. I'll tell you what I did, especially for my wife who took Johnson & Johnson. Uh, I put her on anti-clotting the same day. 
I put her on additionally anti-inflammatory Advil same day. I put her on anti-allergies the same day. And um, I put her on supplements the same day. Fortunately, she's a believer in supplements. So she kept supplements going for the rest of the time. Even today, she was saying when I was taking her to the hospital, she was saying that, hey, those supplements had really helped me uh, shake that vaccine related state. Imagine 90 days of vaccine side effects. It's a horrible thing. And so uh, I had started those right away. I did that for myself as well, although because I thought these I took Moderna or they gave me Moderna and I didn't think it would cause clotting issues because of that. I did not take anti clotting to the level that I gave to my wife. AJ says alpha ketoglutamate helps memory and and brain fog. Excellent. So many questions. Sorry, <laughs> I'm behind. Uh, MS MSNBC says minimum amount of ivermectin one can take prescription. Novice can I start slow, smaller amount daily, bit scared of large dose prophylaxis. Yes. So once again, no advice here. Uh, I always start my patients with a small dose. So, so for example, let's say somebody's dose is 12 milligram based on so the therapeutic window is or therapeutic range is 0 0.15 milligram per kilogram body weight to 0 0.2 milligram per kilogram body weight so i ask them to take half of that the first day and then see what does it do and if they feel okay then take a full day dose and then we continue from there so i always start with a smaller dose CJ says, if the vaccine produced a relatively small amount of spike protein, how would it cause damage as reported in Dr. Patterson's findings? So the problem is the, the S1 portion is sticking in, in monocytes, and these monocytes are living on with it. So it's, it could be a very tiny dose. Some part of that is picked up by monocytes, and now monocytes are just crawling with that little bone in them, and that is a problem. Uh, passing time in Texas says, what is the safe INR level suggested, especially if already on warfarin at recommended level of 2 to 3? So the basically, 2 to 3 is fine. Just start with a very tiny dose of ivermectin, half of the dose. And then, so that is how it should be looked at. The best is to ask your doctor who would do a computer lookup, and computer would actually tell them what dose is safe. The dude73316 says, can you go into detail about the mechanism for the adenovirus vector vaccine when it enters the nucleus? Is there a small chance of chromosomal DNA to be altered? I have done these discussions in detail in the past. There is a, there is a complete video about how the adenovirus comes and attaches to our nucleus, injects its DNA, then that DNA makes the spike pro messenger RNA and spike proteins. I've also done another discussion about what happens to, to that DNA and how is it broken down and, and, and the fate of it. So this discussion is done. <laughs> Doug, Doug's ears are so, so sharp that every time, so Luffy is in the other room. Um, Rima says, I'm thinking of going back on ivermectin prophylaxis. Makes sense, Dr. Veen, or is it just paranoia if looking at current data? I would not mind taking ivermectin uh, prophylaxis. The reason is that's not the vaccines have failed or not failed. It's just more protection. So I said it before. I'll say it once more. Virus is not leaving any stone unturned. It is mutating. It is varying. It is becoming faster. It is doing everything it can to continue to be with us. Why can't we do everything to continue to protect ourselves? So whatever you can do, I would do it. 
AS says, is it safe for someone with Lewis Summer, Sumner syndrome to get vaccinated specifically AstraZeneca? This is a good question. Can you do me a favor? Can you tweet this to me and I would respond on Twitter? I have to actually look at the mechanisms first. Alex Kuhn says, what does the term long haul vaccine mean? Who came up with the term? So long haul side effects of the vaccine. That is the uh, term, what it means. I do not know who came up with that. I use it very often. So the, the names I have is post-COVID long haul syndrome, PCLHS, and post-vaccine long haul syndrome, PVLHS. Zahir AIM says, is two doses of Pfizer post-recovery good or will it cause health issues? So are you saying that, hey, somebody recovered from natural infection and now we're talking about the vaccine? I am not a fan of vaccine after the natural infection. So just like I, I'm talking about this young woman who got recovered, who was protected from this, she was asymptomatic and, and was positive. And then somebody asked her to go take a vaccine and now she is stuck. AQP Climber says, do you recommend full anticoagulation for six year old women with 60% pulmonary damage? So it is really anticoagulation depends upon their bleeding tendency at that time. So yes, anticoagulation should be done. The question is, what is the dose of the anticoagulation? How much anticoagulation to do? That would depend upon their bleeding tendency and the damage. Because if there's a lot of damage and we produce bleeding tendency in them, they would cause bleeding and die. Art Patron Forever says, I saw a comment by a long hauler taking avamectin that added low dose dimitap and had immediate good effect. Excellent. <laughs> Rima says, uh, sorry, one second. Rima says, dilemma to take avamectin now weekly and possibly run out of stash in case of illness. So one can, I hope, restore this stash. But weekly is good, especially for healthcare workers. Neil Agarwal says, if one were to take only a single dose of messenger RNA, would the immunity it produces eventually increase to be similar to a two-dose immunity after a long enough time period? So, so far, the data that we have from one of the studies is from UK, and that showed up above about 80 84% immunity compared to vaccine that could produce 94 percent or more so i think maybe there could be a later on but during two to three months time frame immunity does not reach two doses of vaccine but still goes up what i do not know is will it protect from hospitalization from death or not so sunshine beam says can we switch to pfizer already taken two doses of sinopharm six months ago so um, a friend of mine, my brother's friend, called me yesterday from Canada. And they had the same thing. They said, we took a Chinese vaccine. Now folks here in Canada, US are not, um, they don't consider that to be the vaccine which allows them to then travel. So they said, should we take the messenger RNA vaccines too? So it's a, it's a decision that is difficult. It is between you and your doctor. Um, to me, if I have taken a vaccine and there is an efficacy of that, then I would not take one more vaccine unless there is a variant and the variant is different and the new vaccine is different for that variant. Or unless the vaccine I took has no efficacy or low efficacy. The problem is the Chinese vaccines, I do not know their efficacy correctly. The data is not available that correctly. So I would not take it 
if I have already taken a vaccine, just because there are so many side effects. So RH says, do you recommend prophylaxis monthly or weekly? I have always recommended prophylaxis weekly, and I believe in weekly. Bilal New Jersey says, Dr. Mean, what do you, what do you, uh, aspic meds, which it's aspirin family for wax long haulers. Aspirin is good as well. I don't, I didn't catch the question correctly though. Gazer Gazer says, can long term use of wormer ivermectin do harm in the long term? Do you mean dewormer ivermectin? No. Uh, so here's the deal. I have said it many times. We have never used ivermectin in this way before. So what is the outcome of it is still to be known. So far, I have not heard from anyone for the side effects that are uh, too dangerous. Most of the side effects that I've heard are dizziness, headache, or um, GIT disturbances. In one case, I've heard fall as well because of dizziness. The sturdy strat strategy says, <clears throat> Dr. B, what is a good level of vitamin D to have in our system? I'm getting blood work soon to check vitamin D levels. Very good. Congratulations. You're getting the blood work done. Uh, the study that showed that the um, COVID-related death rate fell from 6 to 7% to lesser than 1%. That study said that people who had 40 nanogram per milliliter and greater levels of vitamin D had this lower risk of death and hospitalization, especially death. Nico says, do you recommend 0.2 milligram per kilogram weekly for ivermectin prophylaxis or is a lower dose adequate? 0.15 to 0.2 milligram per kilogram weekly is fine. <laughs> John Snyder says, you won't get worms, yes. And if you have worms, they'll get out as well. Uh, John Pest says, do you recommend the vaccine for children of age 12 to 17? No. But see, this is a very, very tough question for me. And people know why. Uh, it is a uh, parent's question to answer. It is a doctor's question to answer, uh, but the reason I'm so deterministic to say no is the following. You saw that CDC came out and they published this number that 53% of the cases of cardiac inflammation are in 9% of the children population that is from 12 years to 24 years. Even then they said, continue. So I'm angry about that. Uh, but saying no is difficult for me. The reason is, what if a child gets it, the infection, and what if they die? At the same time, there is this issue with the vaccine as well. So see, it is a difficult decision for me. Uh, I just feel that either they should have a protocol for how to protect, or they should not put these, this, these children at risk. And honestly, CDC, FDA, WHOs, NIH, they have done this for every group, not just children. They just said whatever and continue going. Web access says, Dr. Barodi in Australia, a gastroenterologist recommended ivermectin. It would be fascinating to have a discussion. I actually reached out to Dr. Barodi. So they have a, uh, they have a link to say media requests. So I reached out to him. They never responded. Roman says, I tweeted at you the analysis in Israel that showed that NNV of average of 16,000 to prevent one death. So number needed to treat, uh, to vaccinate. And that for every three deaths, save two would have to be sacrificed. Please review. Okay, I'll check it out, Roman. <laughs> Zen Solo says, 
Could one develop morbid addiction to ivermectin after prolonged use? No. There is no such known case. Um, Teresa says, Dr. Mubin, did you do, did you like low carb keto types diets and paleo diet for COVID recovery? I haven't seen that. I have never asked my patients to change their dietary habits. <laughs> Omok Lamok says, any update on India? Why so silent in news? I think because they're doing better. And news might be silent because they are probably doing better with ivermectin. And then reporting on them is news have to say, why are they doing better? So let's look at it. News, folks, media, mainstream media has been uh, very, very corrupt in this uh, pandemic. At least uh, I can talk about the US media where I live. I do not know about other countries. So look at this. <clears throat> this is how they were doing with the cases. On May 8th, 409,000 cases a day. And now they are down to 37,000. So lesser than 10 times a day. And if I go down here to the death rate, that is also reducing. 907 deaths per day compared to 4,000, 5,000 deaths. So about five, uh, five times reduction, four to five times reduction. So they're doing better. So if media is going to report on it, what are they going to say? India's cases have automatically dropped because they can't say this happened because of vaccine. So they'll have to find something else. They'll have to say automatic just dropped. If that is the case, then would it drop every? <laughs> this is Kyrie. Kyrie is is playing where I spilled the coffee, so she is just <laughs> enjoy. These these cats are funny. So, what are they going to say? That hey, because there was uh, there was ivermectin, that is why they became better. Media does not want to say that. Can they pin it on? on vaccine, they cannot say that. So is this then the magic that is causing it? And they cannot say that either. That's why their best bet is to just be quiet. Actually, a few days ago, one of the doctors from India sent me a message, which is very interesting to see. So let me see if I can. So they said, good day, doctor. I was just wondering, how come we haven't seen too many post-COVID cases in Goa? So he himself practices in there. So this is more of a rhetorical question to answer. Maybe because we have ivermectin in the treatment protocol of COVID and we start low dose steroid after seven days, if fever doesn't subside or there is drop in saturation or elevation of CRP more than 26 gram per liter, 26 G per liter or HRCT score more than nine. So that is what's going on. So what will media do? <laughs> this is like media's... Uh, Ivermectin is a problem for them. Alex Kuhn says, so if Ivermectin can prevent and even treat early, early COVID, why are we uh, ex uh, vaccinating people, especially when some people end up having tragic results? It's absolutely unnecessary. No. So I would agree to this that Ivermectin has a role. My community, the cool beans, know it that from the day one, I've been talking about vaccines. Having said that, you are correct that if ivermectin is freely allowed, if ivermectin can be used, then people, some people who are not going to get a vaccine, they just don't want to, 
they would have at least this choice. And this choice should be open instead of becoming a taboo. Hipster Kiwi says, is there any official reasons why long haul COVID victims like me are having symptoms improve after taking the vaccine? So there are, there are some people who actually benefit from this. And here is how this could be possible. Imagine that we have those monocytes carrying around those S1 protein pieces. And then imagine you get the vaccine. Vaccine causes the immune system to be kicked and start making antibodies and T cells that are against these S1 proteins. So now if the monocytes are expressing the S1 protein and this vaccine has kicked up the immune system, they may attack these monocytes and kill them, clearing them out and causing an improvement. However, I've also seen that some people actually take the vaccine after being long haul and they become worse. So this is just a weird state. Jody says, I think these natural spikes spike high and fast, then fall off a cliff like South Africa did their second wave with their variant. Yeah, so I think that there is, I have seen it every single time, and I believe society changes their behavior. People start masking, they do start social. I mean, look at the images that came out of India. Folks who are living there, my team members are there. I know that they would ask me almost every other day to say, how else can we protect ourselves? So there is a behavioral part as well. <laughs> Doug Poss has this comment, which I have uh, no idea how to <laughs> respond to this. Uh, Teresa Stewart says, clarification, the kids are moving here on one year sabbatical from India, but the senior pastors are staying in India. The church there needs to know about ivermectin so bad. Lots of people lost there, she told me. Yes. Gold Country Ra says, maybe you can contact, contract Avermectin Man to Marvel as Man, man, <laughs> man can kind of true superhero. That is actually true. My Avermectin Man doesn't have a nose and has cross eyes. So maybe I should draw him a little better. <laughs> Bilal New Jesse says, Dr. Mubeen, what do you think about help Ephraim's therapy for long hauler success treatment? No idea. Um, Please send me some link or tweet at me some links that I can read. Zahir says, I took the second dose of Pfizer and I previously recovered from COVID a few months back. Should I worry about any adverse health effects? Um, when did you take the second dose? And if you are so far doing okay, then you should be okay. Uh, I, considering what I'm seeing with the long haulers, if I am the one in that risky window I would take anticoagulants, I would take anti-inflammatory, I would take anti-allergies, I would take ivermectin just to make sure I can navigate that time without ending up in a strange state. Jerry says, would long-term protection from one dose Moderna be stronger than one dose Pfizer due to higher dosage? So the Pfizer also has, over the uh, period of time as it passes, they reach up to 84% efficacy. I would suspect a similar thing with Moderna, but Moderna has not given that data. So in theory, you could say it, but from a data point of view, Pfizer has actually shown that they are effective. B. Curious says, have you or FLCCC doctors made a comparison of patients requiring hospitalizations, transfers to ICU, and death from your own practice in comparison to the national average? That's a good question. I am sure that some of the doctors are keeping that data. Um, I just know this, that from my patients, there has no one ever gone to the hospital. There is one case where my, my class fellow's mother, she was... Uh, fully vaccinated with a Chinese vaccine. Then she developed um, COVID. He reached out to me about, I think, a week after she developed it. 
I started her on high dose ivermectin and other things, and she still didn't make it. So that is one case. Otherwise, I have no one who is in the hospital or who died. I'm sure that other doctors should put that data together as well. <laughs> so <clears throat> let's answer. So anonymous, A anonymous says, how long should I take H1, H2 and other supplements, quercetin, to prevent LHS? No, do I need to take it forever? So again, no advice, but not forever. I would suspect at least 90 days. Uh, Tom Guyonet says, could ivermectin potentially reduce negative side effects or efficacy or the vaccine of the vaccine if taken alongside? No. So I have discussed it. Even today, I discussed it a few uh, minutes ago. Ivermectin does not interfere with the vaccine's behavior. It just interferes with the immune system's dysregulation or spike protein's behavior outside or even inside the cell. So how about we stop for today here? Uh, please remember, this week is interesting. We'll have Dr. Paul Merrick. We'll have uh, Steve Kirsch. We soon are going to have uh, Dr. Tess Laurie and many other doctors who are joining us as well. So please do me a favor. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are three links in the description. You can buy me a coffee. You can use PayPal to support this work, or you can be a patron. Um, there is a question. Be curious, you're welcome. M MSNBC says, could I take two tablets two weeks instead of big dose? Two tablets twice a week, meaning three milligram each. So it really, talk with your doctor too, but normally a dose lesser than therapeutic dose has no not much effect. The first small dose is useful to understand how your body responds to it. Maya says, is it okay to administer ivermectin and VIT supplements if this patient is elderly and admitted in hospital? Just do the, so hospital pharmacies have the drug interaction uh, computers. So just look at those, otherwise, yes. Ambassador says, what is your estimate about underreporting of the adverse side effects? Look, so many patients I've seen who are long haulers, they have not reported them. So I think it is massively underreported. JLB says, any news on mixing vaccines? AstraZeneca, second Pfizer. So we saw that from UK studies that they had mixed AstraZeneca. So they trialed AstraZeneca, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, and Pfizer, AstraZeneca. And uh, in majority of the mixture, they saw that the second dose created a bigger immune response. So the side effects were more. Jude says Canada mixes vaccines. So <clears throat> Pasi says LL Hena. Hope that Dr. sees it's important question. So let's see here. LL Hana says, my immune system is actually overactive, so I'm not sure what to do. Maybe try to reduce inflammation after the shots as quickly as possible. So the best way, again, not an advice to you, uh, for my own family members where there were allergies, I had asked them to continue to take anti-allergies, anti-inflammatory, anti-clotting, even before the vaccine, and just continue on for next many weeks. Vitamin D levels are very important as well to keep the inflammation in control. So uh, Louis says, questions for Dr. Marek, not on social except Discord. So I have asked for the questions on Twitter and on, uh, on YouTube as well. I'll ask on Discord too. Teresa says, I'm so excited to learn more on another day. Thank you, Dr. Mobin. Feeling grateful. Thank you very much. Stay safe and happy and healthy. And I would see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.